No, good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. We are ready to begin. Uh, Komal, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Yes, certainly. So I'll just yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, I'll uh, just take two minutes, sir, to uh, introduce you to uh, the audience today. Uh, Mr. Rajiv Datta has appeared in various matters, both as an advocate on record and also as an arguing counsel in the Supreme Court of India, involving almost all major branches of civil and criminal law, including but not limited to taxation, banking, commercial laws, telecom regulatory authority of India, national green tribunal, customs, excise, uh, service tax, appellate tribunal, uh, etc. He has attended various arbitration proceedings as a counsel and appointed uh, was appointed as a co-arbitrator in five ICC arbitrations in addition to ad hoc arbitrator in domestic arbitrations. So given the versatility of your experience and accomplishments, uh, sir, there is so much to know from you and make the best uh, use of this opportunity today. Uh, we would like to begin, however, uh, is with how, as a first-generation lawyer, uh, what you would like to share, uh, be it about your challenges, your struggle, or the pr pride around it, anything you would like to share with us. Uh, uh, thank you, Komal. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, let me, uh, at the very outset, uh, you know, uh, be forthright and... Uh, uh, state that, you know, uh, success anywhere in any profession has, uh, there is no one mantra for success. And uh, the important uh, success is always the subjective success. And uh, of course, we, we do have, uh, you know, uh, it can be divided into objective and subjective. So objective is like, how much do you earn? Uh, what car you drive? And uh, you, how much, what's your bank balance, et cetera, et cetera. That might give uh, satisfaction and uh, be treated as a success for many. But after all, it is the subjective satisfaction as to what, what is it that you, uh, your happiness, where does your happiness or contentment come from? For example, you may be uh, uh, working in a very big law firm, but you may not be a happy person there because it's not coming up to your expectations. Uh, I am really not very sure whether I can be treated as a role model for the upcoming uh, lawyers uh, who are the first generation lawyers, but definitely I have spent a long time in this profession and uh, it is also absolutely, um, uh, it's a fact that I am the first generation lawyer in my family. So there are there are ups and there are downs and uh, i think uh, the listeners who are there may also be you know uh, very keen to hear as to what is the story behind because i spent now more than four decades in the profession and uh, so i think uh, the the first thing that comes to my mind is the beginning uh, every every person must today we, and we live in the present so we we have to assess every situation according to our present uh, circumstances uh, it is a fact that from 1975 when i started my practice till now uh, a lot of water has uh, flown under the bridge things have drastically changed when i joined the profession in 1975 it was a very different scenario it was, uh, uh, I mean, it, it was, it was, uh, there, there was nothing like it is today. I mean, right from the, the factor of transport or uh, telephone or an office, I, I, everything is, is, is something which is, which is not there with you. And uh, I am sure many, many uh, my friends, many of my friends, even today, who probably are uh, aspiring to be lawyers or who are, um, in the profession, uh, who have joined the profession recently, they all must be facing a similar kind of a, a problem. But yet, yes, yes, one thing was there with me because my parents were from Delhi. So I always had a place to, I had roof over my head. 
and uh, I could so that that is a very big factor. In fact, I have seen many uh, of junior lawyers uh, who had joined the profession at my time. They were struggling even to you know get a, a suitable accommodation. And um, uh, today, I think we have uh, we have more accommodation, and uh, it's very easy to get tenancies. At that time, it was very difficult and very difficult for a lawyer to get an accommodation. You know, there was a certain perception about lawyers in the in the in the society, and I have seen how my young friends uh, joined up together to have uh, you know collectively go for a room, and there are three or four of them living in one room, and then you know fending for themselves. Finance was also a very big problem, but 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 the fact is that according according to me. Uh, that the, the most important thing for a lawyer in the beginning, in the initial struggle, uh, is is the the help that comes to him is is from the bar. And and I must say that every upcoming young lawyer, first generation lawyer, must uh, be very active and uh, participate actively in the bar affairs, because. You are not recognized by anybody. You are you are an unrecognized person altogether. In fact, when you when you see people, you mingle with people. There are people with who have achieved great success, and at the same time, you are nowhere. So it is the bar association where you get together. And if the second and third generation lawyers are recognized and get recognition from their parents or from their brothers or sisters who are in the profession. Senior advocates or judges, I think the first generation lawyer gets his recognition from his peers, from from those who are with him doing the same struggle. And in the long run, they are the ones who really come to your rescue and help. And initially, let me tell you, uh, it is it is very important as to which which direction you choose because today, when when I say struggle. we will have to zero in on struggle as it exists today today uh, you know there is there is a huge amount of tribunalization courts are now uh, limit having limited jurisdictions in many spheres we have telecom sector we have we have so many specialized uh, areas where a lawyer can practice so the first thing is in our time we did not have anything like this we right from the beginning became litigators as uh, the lawyers in earlier times used to be and most of the work was done by a senior maybe of course in supreme court we always had advocate on record uh, in high courts there was not even a advocate on record uh, like situation the lawyers used to file their cases draft their cases argue their cases so it was not a team work today it is it is totally changed so the first thing that a, a lawyer today has to do in my opinion has to be he has to choose which line a uh, specialized line he would like to go into and uh, you know uh, i must confess at right away i think uh, uh, the success of any any person um, not only hard work plays a big role because hard work is the ultimate mantra there is no doubt about it but i think it is very important for any lawyer uh, you know uh, we we always say a little bit of luck so i think that luck also plays a big role as to which office you join or which uh, law firm you get into and i must say at the very outset that if you are wanting to struggle to be a litigator then i think the initial years is something you should always step back you should never be in a hurry you should you should be um, uh, you know uh, eschewing you should you you, you should you should um, uh, let everything sink in slowly and law as, as one of my seniors had taught me whenever there was a, a, a proposition we were two or three seniors in the chamber or juniors in the chamber we used to immediately try and find a solution and we used to take rush to him and uh, with a with a judgment or something and then he used to look at it and say no 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 this doesn't apply in our case at all and then he asked me one day are you going to be a lawyer for for a month 
uh, are you going to be a lawyer for a year? Are you going to be a lawyer for life? So I said, no, I'll be a lawyer for life. He said, then why are you in a hurry? Read, read your case. Read it. Read it once. Read it twice. And then you, you will yourself find that you are totally comfortable with it. So these are very important things. And I think initially you must try and join and get the best office if you can and uh, join. Of course, you can, uh, I mean, as a senior advocate, I always tell everybody who comes to me that don't join a senior because seniors get briefed from outside. And whoever brings a brief to you he is already a lawyer in that case. And you probably will get to read something, but you will not be able to participate in it. So you have to make up your mind. Either you do it yourself or you, if you are keen, you can join law firms. Today, it's a very big thing. There are a number of law firms you can join. But again, there are uh, there's a downside to it also. Once you get used to a salaried kind of a job, uh, even as a law officer in a company or working in a law firm, then I think in the long run, you have to be prepared and ready for it because then you, you will not get the thrill and, 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 and the fun and the freedom of being, being, being a litigator, a lawyer. Because, uh, and that, that is why I say, hold on, step back, and, and don't, don't be in a hurry. Because I know finance and uh, money is, plays a very important role. But slow, it, it, it is a slow process. And law is something which, which if you have taken up the profession, you are going to be a student of law throughout your career. It is going to be not that today you have passed and got a degree and now you move on into the profession. You will have to go on studying law every moment, every day of your life. So first struggle days, I think the my mantra, if I have to tell anybody who's got no background, is that he should be, he should, he should, he should be, become a part of the bar. Where he, where he will meet his own peers and then he will see to it that himself he will be able to gauge as to what, uh, what, what his other friends are into, gain knowledge from there because it's very difficult to, to climb the ladder straight away. There's, there's no quick uh, solutions here. So you have to, you have to be slow and, and take it easy. And in my case, I uh, joined the profession in 1975 and thereafter I joined a senior advocate and uh, worked in his office for some time. And thereafter, uh, after one and a half years, uh, I, was, I was very happy because at that time I was looking for a job. And uh, uh, I must tell you, I was not, um, uh, you know, I, 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 I never aspired to be a lawyer when I was in college. I, I was more of a sports person and I wanted to have an active service life, et cetera, et cetera. But once when I hit a job, this, the senior colleague in my office told me that this, this law officer's job is a demotion for a lawyer because you are now a, a lawyer who is absolutely free and has the freedom to practice in any court in India, et cetera. And now you will be working for one single company. So that is a demotion. And that really hit me very hard. And thereafter, I started, uh, uh, you know, being very serious about my profession. And then thereafter, in 1977, I joined office of Mr. S. N. Kakkar. He was the Solicitor General. He really made me, uh, uh, you know, not only work hard, but he he drove me in in a in a kind of a, a way that I started enjoying my work. Because I saw him, the way he used to prepare his cases and he used to get fun out of it. He used to, he used to, and then he used, he used to tell me that Rajiv, if you go to a court and if the judge or the opposite side knows the case more than you, then you are a failure. You must go to a court and give an impression that everyone has to hear you if they want to understand this case, especially the judge. And that is what you do day in and day out and that is why you will be noticed by the judges and in fact judges are burdened to a great extent they have shortage of time they have too much work and if you solve their problems you 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 always go to a a court with a dispute but if you offer a solution if you give them something 
which will resolve this dispute the judges will notice you and then whenever you appear again before them they will feel yes this is a person i must hear he, not only he knows his case he also knows how to put an end to this so that is very important i think hard work of course but you must try and start enjoying your work because you know sometimes when you work on the original side you have to do reading which is very lengthy very lengthy judgments you have to assimilate the facts you have to go through the evidences so is the case in criminal law you know earlier we used to have very clear distinction that used to ask a lawyer i am a civil lawyer i am a i, I, I am a criminal lawyer but those two distinctions have now dis disappeared a civil lawyer can be you know a many many things he can be a corporate lawyer he can be doing work on the desk some many many lawyers don't even see the courts in their uh, uh, a long time in their profession because they don't come to the courts in, in fact i always maintain that they create work for us so <laughs> when they make uh, their agreements and when they make all kinds of contracts we are the ones in the courts who analyze them and get them through so my uh, from mr kakkar i thereafter uh, he he ceased to be a solicitor general and then i became an advocate on record by that time in 1981 i became an advocate on record in supreme court and then i my journey as an advocate on record in supreme court is a very satisfactory journey because i i was an advocate on record of the supreme court till the year 2000 when i was designated as a senior advocate no advocate on record see every facet of a lawyer has its own demands and and you have to sink into them and to accomplish that job and i am telling you today there is there is this lot of change there is cell phone available there is uh, i mean uh, the computers are there laptops are there now you don't need to go to the library you can dig out software is available no i belong to an era when there was nothing of this sort or you had to go to the library and do the the research yourself today it is very different but the fact is ultimately it amounts to and boils down to the same thing you still have to ha take the initiative you still have to dive into it you still have to find the solutions even if you are helping a senior in a case or you are arguing the case yourself so that hard work definitely is important and pays so after being a part of mr kakkar's office and i learn and i'm learning from there as aor the most important thing was drafting you have to draft your slps sometimes you have to draft your slps overnight and let me tell you uh, although it is always said that supreme court is the last court you get everything you get two judgments or three judgments but to analyze those three judgments and to find grounds and specially questions of law is not an easy task let me tell you i have been uh, I, i must tell you an incident how important it is for you to present your case i was once in in the court of justice ruma paul she was a very very uh, celebrated judge of the supreme court and she only issued notice in a case because she said i was so happy when i read this case although i find there is hardly anything in the case but the manner in which you have prepared it the way you have prepared the case i am going to issue notice in this case because your work i am really impressed with so so that kind of work when you put in and then there is a for a advocate on record and many of the listeners here may be uh, drafting filing themselves and uh, the the important thing is that you you are dealing with the registry of the supreme court because you know every or, or, or any court for that matter you may be in any court the registry of that court is where your dealings are and you do have uh, i mean after some time you do have uh, assistance of a of a clerk or a munshi or whatever but let me tell you it is your rapo with the registry that because those people are also very overburdened they also do work according to see it's it's it, they are they are working in an office it's it's a it's a kind of a um, salaried job for them so if you go and tell somebody this is an urgent case please list it he will say i am today i am done i have done my quota of work today so what do you have to do you have to build a rapport and let me tell you the rapport can be built on human terms 
there's no other term let me tell you people have this belief that you can go and you know there are other very many other negative ways of doing it not at all throughout my aor career wherever my file went every person in the registry was saying was very happy because i got the feedback they said oh this is rajiv datta's case all right let's take it up first and they did it and they did it on their own similarly in the court the judges they come to know who is a fly by night lawyer and who is not a fly by night lawyer if you are there present every day whether you see many days you will not have a case now the important thing there also is that lawyers very initially in their in their life must develop the art of reading not only law but other books and other i mean like, like for example literature wherever is your interest it doesn't matter that you 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 are reading uh, you know some particular kind of books but reading because it it is it is something which sharpens your weapon as far as the language is concerned as to how you how you speak in the court you see when you appear in a court the judges should i mean your your words should ring 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 some kind of bells in their ears so that is the that is the art and that only comes with with practice practice like for example in music they say that the only way you can learn music is practice 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 and in law it is only hard work hard work hard work and a lawyer has to be a perfect gentleman according to me right from the day you enter the court everybody observes you whether it is your colleagues whether it is your seniors how you talk to people how you dress up let let me be very uh, i'm a candid about it everybody notices a person who is well dressed now you are not there as a i mean it's not a fashion show or something like that but it is it is something which is pleasing which which the other person will say i am very happy to see meet and the way you speak way you approach people all that is very very important and uh, you get noticed and once you get noticed you see when when people often ask where do you get your work from the 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 answer to that is look at the sky and say i don't know i don't know from where it is coming but sometimes or the other every day somebody calls me up and says are you are you ready to take our case are you so so don't, don't and and the thing is not to worry too much about it see there are days and there are days when we don't have a case in the court what happens at that time you should have an alternate where you do your reading you take care of your office you you know and there are so many other things that are that a lawyer is supposed to do and including i already told you that his mannerisms is the way he addresses because you have to be an icon in the society let me be very frank everybody you must have noticed those who are already lawyers and those who are becoming lawyers you, whenever you meet somebody or the other he says i i need a i need your guidance i need your assistance in something that is happening what happens why, why do they do that they do that only because they place you at a certain pedestal that you are a person who will be in that position to guide them and that position you have to create for yourself so the bar as i told you must participate in activities of the bar because first generation lawyers have only bar which will take them through you must participate in all the activities be a part of the bar and that's also one way in which you get noticed and uh, as soon as you get your license bar, bar comes as a as a as a very big present to you that here is some a place where you can go sit talk to people you know spend your free time and also you know mingle with others so that that's very interaction is very important very very important so initially all these things will matter and once you go on i think uh, there is no fixed rule 5 years 4 years 6 years 7 years it will depend it will depend on every uh, person in a different way that's how you you pass the initial years and after my advocate on record i became uh, I, i i while i was advocate on record i also served as a standing counsel for the state of punjab that was another experience because then you have to you have to work for the government because there are certain uh, limitations when you work for the government and there are the workload is too much 
and you don't get enough you don't get paid well i mean it's it, it's something that is lingering on every person who works for the government knows it so the the other thing is that when when you uh, as an advocate on record of a state your your timing has to be adjusted you have to continuously go and work and then the judges notice you how much are you helping them because the state many times is in a position where the see for example in supreme court i can tell you we file cases just for the heck of it i mean some 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 somebody says let let this case be culminated in the court i am not going to take a decision on this so many times the judges will look at you and say why have you filed this uh, slp why have you filed this it, it has no meaning nothing so you have to be prepared for that so working for a state for 2 two, two and a half years is a very different experience i had and also a state like punjab i got a lot of input into doing a lot of criminal uh, matters and uh, of course uh, service matters at the same time and then thereafter i was designated as a senior in 2000 and then thereafter the journey has been uh, as a counselor i must also add that i became vice president of the supreme court bar because i as i told you i am very much a person who tells everybody that you must be a part an active part of the bar i represented the executive committee of the supreme court bar it in many many uh, i mean uh, uh, positions but ultimately i became the vice president and at that time when i became the vice president i was not a designated senior in 1996 Uh, but it was uh, the the members were very kind and i was very happy to serve them it's interesting sir very good uh, you also spoke about um, it's just that while you were talking so there are couple of people who've been writing questions pertaining to what you've been saying yes. so i just wanted to tell them that uh, we'll take the questions maybe towards the end uh, there is so much to know uh, from uh, mr datta let's just continue let him continue the way he's prepared the flow for all of us Uh, they just wanted to know how to uh, choose uh, which firm to join things yeah. like that <laughs> i can i can understand that <laughs> suggest a book so they been you know uh, there's a lot of activity on the chat here uh, however sir please go ahead and um, uh, if you have anything in particular uh, in mind uh, to share with all of us which would really help us go a long way Uh, because the idea behind this webinar is uh, from your experience there are so many people who look up to you and would love to know uh, more about you and how it would help them in their careers so i okay, think okay. Then, then i can shift the drift a little i must tell you that uh, i i have been now being i i am now very actively uh, working on arbitrations and uh, since uh, about 10 years back i started um, i i have done i had appeared in many cases relating to arbitration uh, even uh, i filed you know a, a lot of lot of uh, suits in delhi high court and thereafter i uh, passed i i filed uh, specially petitions arising out of high court judgments and then this is one law which in front of my eyes was developing i mean it was changing and since 1990 after globalization there was a great need in this country because it was felt world over that we are lagging in dispute resolution and and the dispute resolution was something which uh, started to be noticed and we started uh, you know paying attention to it the 1996 act then subsequent amendments the judgments uh, which came and the courts which were very uh, in the beginning in when the 1940 act was in, in operation the courts were very uh, their approach was very you know close fisted they would even examine an agreement they would not only uh, confine themselves to the arbitration clause so many things and the courts would always interfere at the drop of the hat now that all that was fading away india was emerging as a global entity and we adopted the unsitral model we were trying to come up to the world level and i was very fortunate that i got appointed as a party appointee i i in in a, a appointed lawyer uh, an arbitrator in an icc arbitration so that was a that was a, a very eye opening experience for me once i uh, sat as an arbitrator with with international panel 
and uh, the international panel was uh, comprising of persons who were very well respected in the in the field of international arbitration thereafter i did three more international arbitrations and then subsequently as the law kept on changing and uh, in fact i was responsible for one or two leading judgments in the supreme court uh, in one of the cases i was opposed by justice indu malhotra who she who she is now a sitting judge of the supreme court and we got that judgment long back and thereafter uh, in, in i played a very big role in in um, you know sbp patel which is a very famous case in supreme court it all started with my petition in the supreme court where it where where, where i had raised the issue that appointment of an arbitrator by 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 the by the chief justice is an administrative act and not a judicial act and subsequently that went on and on it went to nine judges actually and and finally it it, it got concluded so arbitration and then then slowly alongside emerged mediation mediation and uh, now uh, as a senior counsel of course i was regularly appearing in the courts on the appellate side doing my normal work but at the same time i started paying attention and then the situation that really emerged in india was that we must now because 90% of the arbitration in india were ad hoc arbitrations now in ad hoc arbitration there are there are so many limitations and therefore there are delays and there is prolonged arbitration so the need for institutional arbitration was arising and since i had already tasted icc i became a member of lcia i became a member of scia and i i started concentrating more on arbitration and then i noticed that everywhere whenever i went to conferences etc at least in india we were criticizing the appointment of retired judges as arbitrators but we were not offering any solution we were only criticizing and judges were left with no alternative but you know when you sit in the court you want experienced person you have and and the judges who appoint arbitrators they have also seen what is the dispute so naturally they were appointing their their own colleagues who had retired so i thought it is very important now for me to to start participating in arbitration as an arbitrator offer myself as an arbitrator because simply by criticizing you are not going to solve the situation and then the delhi delhi uh, international arbitration center came up and now mcia has come up so institutionalization of arbitration in india is now growing rapidly growing we have some amendments have already come in 2018 in the act and it is the future is also going to be very very bright and then i was referring to mediation let me tell you mediation has worked wonders in india yes sir, i read somewhere you've written that it should be made mandatory for civil litigation yes yes according to me like in america a case before the dispute goes to the court they analyze it and they try to bring the parties together and there's a settlement now in india we were not doing that and then section 89 of the cpc we even today don't have a, a legislation on med mediation but slowly it is going to come because it is on the board and i am sure of course we made mediation rules in 2006 the delhi high court mediation center was doing wonders and i am also uh, a, a member of the international bar association where i am india head for mediation so whenever i used to go whenever i used to go for annual conference i used to take the figures of india uh, every state every high court and and also uh, let me tell you uh, you know uh, legally something which is pro bono in india and even mediation for a very long time in india was only pro bono now we have private med mediation centers coming up etc i think it will solve the solution uh, it will it, it it will be a great solution to our problems of uh, backlog etc in the court but i must tell you how i thought about it i thought about it in a very different way i thought every person now starts saying that i am a mediator i am an arbitrator so i took two master classes icc to study arbitration i had to go to paris and i had to go to hong kong spent one full week studying after i was accredited as an arbitrator 
then now the mediation supreme court of india has also started a mediation center but there we were not having trained mediators we we are now having but there are only two groups of mediators who were trained i joined that training uh, session which was held last year at the behest of many of the judges who were who were presiding on mediation because uh, they were very actively uh, thinking about how to bring a change in mediation because so many cases were coming to the supreme court also which could be resolved so they requested that some senior advocates should also go and participate in this process of uh, being uh, taught and learn the art of mediation it is of course it is very easy to think that mediation is nothing we make the two parties sit together no no it's it's when i dived into it yes. and uh, the definition I so the much process. i cannot i cannot tell you now we are having a a, a very uh, accomplished mediation center coming up in the supreme court and very soon of course this intervention by, by the corona covid uh, once it is over i am sure we will be doing much more work although although we are already doing work and some of us are already doing mediations uh, and resolving also but my point is that all persons who want to participate in this must get themselves accredited they must join an institution learn a little bit and then then come and do mediation so that it's not like a like like something very general uh, you know that uh, you put it so simply that you put two parties together and if they want to agree to each other they can otherwise no but a mediator's role what he has to do because every situation is different and every situation can lead you let me tell you doing mediations i have found it is one of the toughest things to do to bring parties together who are having there are is especially in the indian scenario you know people are having ego people are having so many uh, restrictions for example they have communication barriers which they have created themselves you have to break them you have to bring them together it's 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 a fascinating area and i think uh, very soon even in supreme court we will have a very pulsating mediation center although it is already working delhi high court has done wonders it is it, it is it is done very very well and i think uh, number of uh, the percentage of disputes being resolved there is 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 absolutely very high it takes care of the pendency of cases also to a great extent sir yes it will it will help but that's not the sole aim hmm. see the sole aim is not just get rid of the cases the sole aim is not that it is it is bringing satisfaction to the people the citizens and the users i mean see this whole system has been created for citizens they must have every day we read in the in the papers supreme court has decided this supreme court has decided that and we look up to that institution but if there is a chance given to you to resolve your own dispute rather than being dragged into court the amount of time you spend the amount of money you spend all that all that can be saved so not only in personal disputes i think now mediation is doing very well in commercial disputes yes and i have yeah, and i, I have also so. visited sorry uh, you were saying something So go ahead. I just I, in, in, we are yeah, we can discuss for people who logged in to know more about uh, how you know how beginners in the field of law what your guidance would be. But please go ahead, complete sir. There are a couple of people sending questions about. You know, uh, uh, I, I I would I would say that this 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 will be this is uh, from the viewpoint of of newcomers only because yeah. today when the newcomers are coming, yeah. when the newcomers are coming, all this is there. Oh, when we started our practice there was nothing like mediation arbitration was only ad hoc and uh, the, the 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 government companies or uh, public sector undertakings were more into arbitration etc etc so as far as juniors and people who are joining the profession or who are newly into the profession they must realize today that you know when you see the type of cases which are being resolved in the courts you will see most of the cases 
which pertain to commercial the commercial world see they are coming from companies now every company today which is which is well established has its own legal law office they have legal uh, heads people serving them and all that so naturally the work from there will go to law firms only that's right sir so it's a it's a great place to be in i mean this is a very important part of uh, <laughs> Uh, there are a lot of questions also here, sir. Would you like to take the questions? A couple of questions from the audience. Uh, I was wanting to know when. When will you uh, be ready? I mean, I am. I am all right. It depends how much time is left. So we it's uh, six forty. Uh, just a couple of people. Who, uh, a lot of people who have actually logged in to know, and they had hopes that you will take up their questions. I thought it would be nice to just take a few of them, maybe. Yeah, sure. Uh, absolutely. Go ahead, please. Yeah, so Khatri wants to know, so how can I choose the law firm is good for me and also for my future. Also recommend a book because you've been talking about how you can also read beyond law, you should also read books. So he's mentioned that. See, uh, choosing a law firm, now that's a, that's a very tough, it's, it's an important question, but a tough question to answer. I must tell you, uh, you will have to do a little bit of due diligence yourself. Now, most of the material, most of the material as to which are the law firms in Delhi? I, I, I'm sure uh, the person is from Delhi or if she's from Bombay, uh, then, then there is a very different Bombay already has a society of law firms. Of course, now we have in the uh, center also, we have in Delhi also. But see, the law firm that you, you cannot pick and choose, for example, you, you cannot say, uh, I want this law firm only. See, you have to do a lot of research and then apply to those law firms. For example, as I said, if you are interested in commercial work, if you want to do work associated with commercial law, then you should strictly, I think you should look for a law firm because as I was saying earlier, most of the commercial cases by big companies are only going to law firms because there is a reason for it. The reason is that it the, the cases, the proportion, the proportion of the case is so large that it is a teamwork. And for an individual to have such a team is really, really not possible. So you would be surprised that in a law firm, when a file comes for filing a case or doing some work on the table of a lawyer through the partners, you would be, I mean, I think it's common knowledge that at least four to five to six partners in every big law firm are only doing work as to how they should, uh, you know, solve the problem of the companies in many other ways. And, you know, the company law problems, their meetings, etc., etc. And it is their proximity to these companies that brings the cases there. So which don't go to individuals and the individuals like if you want to be a litigator, then then don't worry about it. You will also get work, but it will be a, a time, it will be a long drawn out process. So law firm, you choose achha, more of more of the law firms in India till some time back. Now things are changing. They were family oriented law firms. Now they were run by a family. So there the independence the freedom to do work, etc., was was not as a lawyer would like. Because once you are given freedom to uh, given a file, you would like to do it in a particular way. But they may have their own, uh, you know, way of doing it. So you you have to strictly find out which is the law firm, which is which is not uh, dominated by a, a, a very close partnership or a family where you will not get freedom for a long time. And then one drawback in law firms, I can inform you straight away, you get used to getting a particular amount of salary. You become almost like a paid employee. So that sheen of a lawyer is, is, is then, you are losing that sheen. You are not in touch with the bar. You are not in touch with the judges. You are not appearing in the court. And let me tell you, Appearing in the court not only gives you that satisfaction uh, of, of arguing a case or molding 
the relief that your client gets it's much more than that but yes it is a much longer process you can go and join a law firm and for many years they will not even let you appear in a case because most of them will engage a senior advocate or they already have a hierarchy in their own firm but it is up to you what if people have asked this leads and uh, this takes us to the next question now weber has asked and there are many people who ask the same question sir how to establish your own independent practice being a first generation lawyer uh, so see, they, i have so already that, i have already told you that you have to take a back seat it will take a long time you will have to get noticed now the work which comes to lawyer you cannot advertise you cannot go outside and say engage me in this case i will do better so the process it is a process it starts with you being engaged by somebody to do a small work in a case when you are found to be worthy then they give you more work that is how you get noticed and as i said in the bar the first generation lawyer has nobody to back him up there is no father there is no brother there is no sister there is no brother judge there is no uncle the only thing which helps you is your peers who are with you in 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 the bar association it gives you tremendous amount of satisfaction that they they will notice you oh if you have a problem like that go to so and so that that per, per person knows and that will come only if you work very hard Uh, so there's a question now uh, does private international law have any significance in india yeah definitely lot of significance see how many indians are residing abroad today the amount of number of people who reside abroad and who have a lot of problems with you know uh, you know comparative law for that matter you you may be living in a jurisdiction which is a civil jurisdiction and you may have a encounter a problem very often problems are arising see there are matrimonial disputes etc and there are you know uh, custody of children and so many other things so the point is private international law is definitely uh, a, a very important subject and will will go on uh, I, i mean go on the, situ- the 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 problems will 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 go on increasing Uh, there is someone who's asked us twice uh, so i we, we know it's important uh, please that, please uh, so niharika says i have an inclination towards ipr and arbitration and mediation both so do you do both go hand in hand can i do both well <laughs> no ipr and mediation and arbitration uh, see arbitration definitely yes but the point is today i feel specialization has come see i know many lawyers you will be surprised i don't know um, i am uh, in front of my colleagues they may not be surprised of course but i know many lawyers who are only who are only doing environment they are only doing environment law they don't go to any other court but to the national greens tribunal i was surprised in the beginning i said how do you do this but it is their passion with work and i used to also think how much work is available over there yes there is a the, the amount of work which is there for every factory you must have noticed recently we had a gas leak so many facts facts are emerging they did not take this license they did not take that license now every every commercial company will have to go to an environment lawyer how do we steer clear about all these things so yes specialization is there but don't Uh, see arbitration you cannot arbitration itself is a, is is a, a mode of adr and it is it is it is uh, you know something where we have it is adversarial but mediation is not mediation is bringing people together and doing settlement so at the same time i think today specialization has come about you have to be uh, concentrating like for example when telecom started in my old days when there was no tribunal uh, there were no tribunals the first tribunal which started was called sigat custom excise and gold control appellate tribunal which is now sistat 
then we got a little diverted because earlier we used to file all the writ petitions in the high court only then tribunal came up then came up cag administrative tribunal and now so many tribunals today nclt nclat has become a great great source of work not only for lawyers but chartered accountants also <laughs> Uh, so there are a lot of people who want to know about internship. I mean, how uh, Ayush Gupta wants to know how a non-NLU student who are about uh, you know to graduate get a job in law firms during these times. And there's somebody who asked for your number to get an internship with you. See, I'll tell you very frankly. For a long time now, I almost have two two interns, and they are coming from the institutions where they are studying. I have. Uh, uh, it's not a tie up but i have uh, given given a letter to those institutions that i will take students from there so they send me regularly interns and let me also tell you the the work of an intern in office office like mine is is very different from in in the law firm my first question to any person who is doing law who is who is in third year or the fourth year i always ask them first question how many articles have you written are you interested in doing articles so going to court and coming back and seeing the scenario is good for one week you can go to high court one week you can see you can go to supreme court one week you can see you may go also go to trial court but the fact is after that it's not going to be a morning evening going to court and coming back you have to sit down and work not only on the cases that i have but i want you to evolve i want you to think and the most important guidance that i can that i can give to the upcoming uh, law graduates and young lawyers i would say they should very seriously start thinking also of joining the judiciary i have found young lawyers who are aspiring to join today the service conditions have improved tremendously there is satisfaction of work and you know that that royalty etc may not be there which used to be there earlier that a district judge or a, and then you can come to high court of course but there is a lot of satisfaction in the work look the infrastructure has improved so much so if you want a steady kind of work in law i would suggest that very early you should start thinking of joining judiciary it's very important and young people must think about it because i've seen many people don't think of it till they are very old then they start thinking if you start thinking from the beginning you will be able to be guided and you will be able to join it at the right time at the right time when i when i say right time for example a person like me if i was offered high court judgeship well this is something something very different if 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 i was offered high court judgeship before i was 45 i would have willingly taken it but i was offered much late and that's why i did not think about it i i think we must induct people as early as possible there many many and, there so they're, they're really working to they're studying for judiciary right from the start the many yes. we have a lot of courses for them as well uh, there is somebody who wanted to know how post pandemic what do you suggest uh, what do you think the uh, trial i'll just read the question so uh, what changes do you think are necessary to be made in trial litigation post pandemic uh, karan beer singh wants to i'm sorry i will you uh, read the question again post pandemic pandemic i have understood what is the other thing uh, what changes do you think are necessary to be made in trial litigation litigation i think the first thing, first uh, uh, definite change is what we are doing just now i have been sitting at home and i have argued about four cases in high court and about three times of, i think fourth time will be day after in the supreme court so uh, one definite change is going to be e filing and appearance through through uh, virtual uh, media so the, you should be prepared with that and i i am let me let me tell you in my time we i when i saw the computer for the first time i only read 1 2 3 4 5 6 and i didn't know how to operate it 
over the years i have learned something or the other but the youngsters are very much up to it and i think it will help them tremendously and they will be able to yes i think the post pandemic lot of other changes will come for example you don't have to waste too much time on running an office you don't you, you can you can sit somewhere uh, very small and uh, have one or two friends together or a or a small staff and do the entire work so e filing is going to be very very important and now working from home i think working from home has become very very essential so don't have to go waste time on taking premises on rent this that and the other yeah. not there we you are great so anand gopal has a very uh, has a question how would you rate arbitration in defense sector in india it's on you very okay so this it's a good question see defense sector in india is totally controlled by government and let me tell you i have done one arbitration uh that's why i found the question interesting where uh, uh the 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 question was relating to manufacturing of an item by a private company which was to be installed in a warship in a in a in a navy ship so it it came for arbitration because it was an msme company the private company was an msme company and therefore it came to arbitration and uh, finally i pronounce the award but uh, in defense sector the private companies which are now because i think we have a new program by this uh, the present government manufacture in india a lot of uh, defense equipment is started to be manufacturing by big big companies like tatas and many other companies now they will have their agreements and i think they will definitely have arbitration clauses so it's 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 going to be a it's going to be a, 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 a good field to work on <laughs> but i don't know whether you will be appointed as an arbitrator because now you see the act you will not be able to be appointed too many times for the same party you know that ashish jain wants to know your views on reforms brought about by finance minister is that relevant to our topic uh, no what did he say what is the question Uh, your views on the new reforms uh, brought by the finance minister uh, no 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 i am not i am not commenting on them because yeah. a it is not relevant to the topic and suddenly it will take us to something else yeah <laughs> some other time yeah so there were a lot of youtube questions there we have quite a few here sir but i really request if you have anything else to uh, that you have in mind uh, that okay uh, through this webinar you would guide uh, the generation uh, next in the legal field uh, what would it be uh, i could go on with the questions sir there are plenty of them but if there is anything that you would proper in particular you would like to talk about Uh, if there is a question, I'll I'll answer that. But before that, I I have one or two things more to add. Sure. The see one one thing. Uh, I think somebody was very much interested in arbitration. I must tell you, I got appointed as a visiting professor in a foreign university to teach arbitration, international commercial arbitration, for one month, and it was a absolutely a phenomenal, fantastic experience. Foreign students. of course it was in english and uh, it was a east european country so uh, i found teaching as a as a very a very very a very enthralling experience and uh, then that that is one aspect and then i think every every uh, upcoming lawyer or a lawyer they must they, they must contribute something towards legal education see we have we have done wonders i mean in the past so many years now we have brought in the five year course etc which was not there earlier plus legal education has gone completely it has changed completely when i was in college law students used to be students who were either uh, you know uh, lingering on in the university for a long time 
and they were not very serious kind of people of course there were some people who had good background of law etc but mostly law faculty was a faculty which was not taken very seriously as a as a as, you know or or towards the study part of it now that has all changed now that has all changed in fact it has become important to join a five year course it is equivalent to joining an iit it is it is not it is not a very mean thing that we have achieved and can you imagine those people who are who are studying there and so totally focused when they will come into the profession what will happen and i am very fascinated by interns who come they are very upright they are see uh, one of the one of the most important thing that a person that a lawyer must have in him is or her is integrity they must have integrity and and honesty see the point is today you you may have a client who may who may be asking you or forcing you to file a certain petition if you are not satisfied with it don't do it don't run after these things it will it will it will, it will create an impression and let me tell you 80% of the lawyers in the profession are only existing because of the impressions that they have created because of the good will that they have generated see i also find lawyers uh, you know whenever there is a change of government panels are changed etc etc very very many lawyers are very you know disgruntled as to how panels are picked up by government etc i don't think you should be Uh, disgruntled at all you should just pursue your own own uh, your career as you have chosen don't run after them because then they will demand from you things which which you will not like to do or which are not at all required to be done somebody who wants to know is cyber law going to be a booming field cyber law yeah somebody just asked how yes is. yes it's already it already is it already is and as we just answered the question of covid and after covid i think uh, a, a great amount of uh, work will be generated a lot of work will be generated medha wants to know should he go to the uh, high court directly um, is it advisable to start practice directly in the high court ha huh, that's a that's a very good question no i must answer that see i tell you my times were different today and i have seen very often very many judges in the supreme court commenting that supreme court was a court a constitutional court it should only do work relating to constitutional matters but because of article 136 it has become a third appellate court what do you learn in, learn over there you it's a, it's a half a minute or one minute or two minutes hearing at the admission time not much high court is much better because you have see jurisdiction is of 226 <coughs> excuse me and then there is the original side now in delhi fortunately i don't know i i disagree with it actually i don't think high court should have original side original side should be only with the civil courts district courts even in delhi high court i don't think any cross examination is done in the courts nothing nothing of the sort so very very few cases but i can tell you one thing the right place to start your practice for the first 10 years in my opinion should be trial courts a lot of exposure a lot of work there that will give you the confidence that will give you the at the trial stage the insight into what is evidence which which it is completely lacking see writ jurisdiction is just filing affidavits and 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 uh, you know uh, filing petitions against the court or institutions or government whatever but the real fascination of trials application even of cpc crpc and evidence act all is at the stage of trial absolutely trial. Agree. absolutely agree sir he can she can say mr datta you never started in trial court 
and you are telling us to start a trial court i tell you if given a chance today you take me back i will first go to trial court the reason i did not work in the trial court were very simple ek firstly the atmosphere was not very conducive the infrastructure was not good you know we middle class we 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 have this that you know we should have proper cleanliness we have have this that all that was lacking and i could never understand how i can be a part of that and just see if you travel just 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 take example of uh, a small place like supreme court patiala house and high court in proximity of one and a half kilometers you have all three you go to patiala house you see the atmosphere you go to high court totally different you go to supreme court totally different now why why you know the government must concentrate on trial courts i am very happy they have brought about you know karkar duma they have brought about saket infrastructure they have brought about has brought about a sea change in the atmosphere so today the young lawyers can afford to go and work in trial court we did not have that opportunity Yes, sir. Thank you. That's a great answer, sir. Uh, Karan Bir Singh has a uh, you know question, which um, you know if if you uh, wish to answer. Do you think a bar AIB exam pattern needs to be changed as ever a twelfth standard can pass it so that it comes in the at par with the exams conducted by UK bar associations? No, you know these shortcuts. I don't think are very good good idea. I I don't think shortcuts are good idea. In fact, when the bar exam started, there was a lot of opposition. i think it's a very good thing in fact i tell you very frankly even at this stage i feel and 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 recently i must tell you i have been made a fellow of of a very prestigious institute called cir chartered institute of arbitration in london how did i become a fellow four years i had to go through five modules last to last year i was in chennai writing an exam as a senior advocate so it is very important <coughs> that this continuous education in the field of practice after every 10 years 15 years kuch brushing up some brushing up brushing up must be there has to be there after all are you still capable of serving your clients i know it's a very different way i mean a lot of thought should be put into it not just you sit in and write an exam i am not saying that i am saying there should be some method even for judges even for judiciary even for judiciary there should be some method by which we are able to ascertain the capabilities because many times i find a very very strange things are happening i went i came across a case where a district judge has written a judgment in a in a very serious matter and he passed an order and did not pass a judgment after that he 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 finally acquitted the accused and said for reasons the judgment will follow judgment was never given it is a reported case so these things keep happening and therefore i think on and off we all must like for example there is a there is a judicial uh, center now where where judges are attending regularly in bhopal extremely good 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 uh, good thing we must have something like that even for lawyers karan bhi to answer the aibe question for many many years we never had that exam so be glad that it came into existence and second when you preparing for that exam you probably taking care of all the bare acts so the preparation that goes into uh, sitting for that exam is uh, exhaustive so i think yeah. I, I, yeah, i sat for that exam i didn't leave any stone unturned to be no, no, you are you are absolutely right and I, i and not only that i must tell you the aor exam in supreme court Yes, somebody asked that question on YouTube, sir. Yes, please. 
and AOR exam in Supreme Court is 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 definitely something which people must uh, go through. It it it. I mean, I, I, in during my time when I passed, the percentage of of people who used to pass that exam was very low. Oh, it was also that so many people never used to sit. Now we have now we have rooms full of people are writing AOR exams. But <laughs> but that's that that change is all acceptable. There's nothing like this. Earlier there were less people. You know, when I joined Supreme Court in 1975, there were only five courts, and 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 probably we had 11 judges. And today, see where we are. And still, we have to grow more and more. A country like India, we 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 are not we are not like Singapore or we are not like Hong Kong or for that matter, not even like any European country. We are we are, uh, you, you know, uh, almost a continent. I mean, South Asia. India is South Asia. Such a big continent. A huge population. Uh, why so much is written about it and less is done about uh, few you know, judges are lesser than the demand is. And the, uh, why uh, I read so many articles around it that the country needs so many more judges and uh, I don't think there, there's more action. There's more. I think that is, that is a separate subject with... I think uh, the, 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 it, it is because of many, many reasons. One, one reason is that the government is, uh, uh, plays a role in it, which probably has to be diluted. We must have uh, a proper induction at an early stage, early in life. Like, for example, I am encouraging these youngsters to become part of the judiciary. And they should pick up, pick up more judges from there. And... Uh, their conditions of service must improve even more. They must be given good salaries. In fact, I feel it will be a good idea if we give them <clears throat> salary according to the amount of work they do. <laughs> I, I know that, that there are there are assessments made of district judges where the high court judges are, uh, you know, the judge in charge. Every in, in, in every state, a high court judge becomes in charge of certain districts. And those district judges and the districts are under him. So he gives a certain amount of evaluation for those judges as to what category he is, how is his performance, because appeals from those judgments come to the high court office. So it's a good assessment. But I think your question was that why we don't have more. I think we need it and it will it, it has to be. I mean, Supreme Court may not have so many. Because I think ultimately Supreme Court should be only a constitutional court, only uh, answering questions, yeah, federal court. It's, it should not be, or it, it has rather become a third appellate court. I think that is something very serious and the law commission and the government must look into this. On that note, sir, it's 7.15. Uh, there are a few questions still. Uh, I, you know, if uh, with your permission, perhaps I could go ahead and ask those questions. It's you can ask one or two more questions and then we can have one more. <laughs> yeah, that would be great, sir. Uh, uh, Weber Mittal says, young lawyers are often, and I don't understand this question, though, young lawyers are often not given relief following the discretion of the judge. How to overcome that lacuna? <laughs> Actually, it's a good question. I, I have experienced it myself. Mm -hmm. Yes, she's. Uh, she, uh, 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 who, who's asking this question? Hello? Webhav Mittals. Vibha. Webhav. Webhav. Okay, Webhav, you are right. I, I have experienced this myself. You see, what happens is, as I told you, when seniors and uh, rather, uh, it's not as if they are treated better than juniors. Uh, it is just that the judges have more confidence. They feel, you know, we, as I told you, we must go to the court to resolve. And as a very junior lawyer, when you appear and even if you try to resolve the case in the first hearing or the second hearing, the judge will say, no, 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 no. And then I have also to blame, let me tell you, very many senior advocates who don't let their junior advocates argue cases. They will just tell them that in this case, please take a date. Don't argue because they know that if this person is given a chance, then probably they have the fear for their client 
or their client's commitment is that only you will appear so but but as far as judges are concerned i don't think that do, they discriminate no they don't do it i i have full faith in them the only thing is sometimes your task may be such that it may be you know something which uh, you know when we go to the court we go for many purposes you know you know there are limitations in doing certain there are procedural hiccups etc etc so don't feel discriminated although you will have to suffer this for some time <laughs> don't don't criticize judges i i am telling you one thing they are very hard pressed for work they have very little time and let me also tell you if you look at the age the high court judges i know many judges who have passed and present they all have some physically they are not they are not able to exercise so much they are all the time working on the files so you and i have the responsibility of treating them well uh, i lost the voice yeah so priyanka am i audible yeah now you are uh, she wants to know does college matter while hiring uh, sorry i didn't catch that does college like she she wants to know you uh, you have to be uh, from top colleges to get hired or uh, i think it's very relative it's hired hired of course by a client yeah okay let me tell you it doesn't matter at all it really doesn't matter a client will not come to you because you passed passed out your law from oxford let me be very categorical and clear otherwise people like me would have not survived here see the clients always come focused they only want an a a good a person who is good on his legs of course they do a lot of research before they engage you and that research involves what kind of a person you are how many achievements you have how are you known in the bar what is your standing so that's why i am telling you that all that will come from there they don't come because you passed out law from 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 uh, you know howard for that matter so and so college any top colleges no top they... colleges no that see the question is good because yes it does make a difference if you have done your law from bangalore law school because their teaching is much better i know it so it does make a difference in your profile but don't think you will be a hit as a lawyer just because you studied in bangalore sorry doesn't work that way <laughs> work also matters vijay narayan uh, wanted to ask and he's been waiting uh, is there any other sources of earning at initial stage for a lawyer in court when they do not receive cases so with maybe uh, getting cases okay. let me let me answer that straight away i don't think you should indulge in anything else you should only concentrate and focus on your profession your profession is a very demanding profession the day you segregate a part of you from the profession the profession will discard you according to me that's a great advice sir as a senior as an experienced person and also like a fatherly advice that don't go here and there just focus no. wait you see why do you do something else because you want to have quick earning you want to you know very soon everybody will come to know about what you do that you are only coming to court only for some you know work and then you disappear you are doing some property dealing or something forget it don't do it don't do it vijay no no don't do it so one last question from anshit jain sir and then we could wrap it up yes what is it that so what do you think about tribunalism of various fields of law does it lead to dilution of power of trial courts yes it does uh, i will tell you but there is a reason for it <clears throat> you know this tribunalization is 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 a handiwork or more popular in civil in civil law countries like in france there is a tribunal for everything we brought in tribunals and we faced the tremendous amount of problem that the constitution of india uh, forged see You, you like for example fundamental rights and the jurisdiction of 
can it be taken away by tribunal no they they, they finally they gave the judgments see tribunalization is good say for example consumer consumer for yes it's a, it, it's a good tribunal firstly like for example uh, cat administrative tribunal those people are experts in that field but the appeal lies directly or indirectly to supreme court or see my the question has to be answered like this in my thinking there is a judicial aspect of that matter so in in consumer forum we have it is headed by a ex supreme court judge and for that matter even cat has some high court judges so the, we have to take care of that that it is not only some administrative justice which is done it should be but unfortunately the sad part in india is that tribunals are lacking members <clears throat> again government is not appointing there are very many tribunals uh, at, at least district forums and state forums where there are no members available very few people are available and uh, i think that is something that needs to be very seriously looked into by the government Thank you so much, sir. All great advice, great insights, very helpful uh, for many, many years because it's on YouTube also recorded. So anytime anybody looks up for answers, can come to this. Uh, thank you for taking the time, sir. And uh, we, we 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 could come back to you for more maybe in future as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. I am uh, uh, deeply obliged, and I hope I am of some use to you. You have spent a lot of time with me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Night.